Executive dysfunction has to do with memory, recall, uh, has to do with working memory, the ability to hold information in your head, uh, time sequencing, passage of time, organization, sequence of tasks. And often it's said that executive dysfunction falls under ADHD and emotional dysregulation falls under mood disorders. The emotional dysregulation falls under both ADHD and bipolar disorder. Also, executive dysfunction falls under both ADHD and mood disorders. So if you're looking, if you're, if you're deciding that emotional dysregulation is the cornerstone of making diagnosis for mood disorders, you'll be incorrect. If you decide that executive dysfunction is the cornerstone for ADHD, you'll be incorrect in your diagnosis. These symptom overlaps are what cause clinical confusion in making diagnoses. So I mentioned executive dysfunction. How many people here don't know what executive dysfunction is? Good, you've all heard plenty of lectures on this. What's important about executive dysfunction is how you define it. So you can define it behaviorally with symptom checklists, or you can define it neuropsychologically with neuropsych testing. You need to keep in mind that those are two different constructs for defining executive dysfunction. If you use neuropsychological testing, three to, uh, 30 to 50% of ADHD individuals have executive dysfunction. So not everyone with ADHD, has neurological deficits in, indicative of executive dysfunction. And if you look at the general population, five to 10% of controls who do not have ADHD have executive dysfunction deficits on cognitive testing. And as I mentioned, executive dysfunction is not solely subsumed under ADHD. There's research on all of these other disorders that show executive dysfunction in schizophrenia, and neurologic illnesses, and major depression, in autism. So executive dysfunction doesn't make your diagnosis in any way. It's part, of the, it's part of the puzzle, but it's not diagnostically specific. So let's look at executive dysfunction in bipolar patients and ADHD. I had a conversation with Joel Goldberg yesterday before he presented a great lecture, by the way. He clearly sees a lot of patients. And we were talking about how to make this differentiation. Executive dysfunction. So compared to controls, bipolar patients had a poor performance on immediate verbal memory tasks. Both groups exhibited significantly lower scores than controls on a variety of neuropsychological tests. And notably, however, ADHD had significantly better performance than bipolar disorder on, again, specific neuropsychological tests. The point here is neuropsychological testing is not going to be able to tell you if the person has bipolar disorder or ADHD based on the deficits of executive dysfunction. So here's a language issue. If you have a mood disorder, you have affective lability. If you have ADHD, you have emotional dysregulation. Uh, is, that, is that vocabulary categorically distinct? If you sit in a room with patients, uh, they don't show up with a tattoo on their forehead with their diagnosis. Uh, I don't know how to make this differentiation, so I think descriptive psychiatry, that is the use of vocabulary to describe psychological experiences, is problematic because it doesn't encapsulate the entire psychological experience that you have to explore and you need to know how to ask about that in order to figure it out. This is the DSM-5. Look at the descriptors here. Increased talkativeness, racing thoughts, distractibility, psychomotor retard agitation, increased risky behavior, vocabulary. Talks too much in social situations, increased talkativeness. Difficulty managing attention, distractibility. Uh, fidgety and restless, hypermotor uh, agitation. So you see how this language becomes problematic in making diagnostic distinctions. It's not simply a checklist and making a diagnosis based on that. The other issue here is that when you have irritable patients who have ADHD, they're more likely to get diagnosed with an affective disorder, and they're more likely to be diagnosed with ODD. That means that if you don't know they have ADHD, and you focus on the irritability, and you say that they have a agitated depression or something, and you put them on a mood stabilizer or an antidepressant, they're not gonna get as well as if you identified the ADHD and treated the ADHD.
So here's the study looking at 150 adults with ADHD, 300, we've seen this data set before. They looked at affective liability scale and an affective intensity measure. ADHD adults, patients, displayed emotional dysregulation with a higher mood liability and responsiveness that was similar to bipolar patients compared to controls. Subjects with ADHD essentially differ from bipolar subjects on perceived emotional intensity, but not emotional instability. And the severity of ADHD increases the severity of the emotional dysregulation.